So Halo Infinite has been out for over a week now, and I think it's time to make some true judgments of how Halo Infinite's multiplayer plays right now. What deserves some praise, but what also deserves some serious criticisms. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again, giving in our commentary about Halo Infinite. You know, last week we did our first impressions about Halo Infinite. Now we've had a full week to play this game, really understand the intricacies of Halo Infinite's multiplayer, and we really get a chance to judge whether or not this multiplayer experience is a good one. So we're talking about the gameplay, we're talking about the progression, that's for sure. We're talking about matchmaking and a whole lot more. So let's not waste any more time. Let's just jump right into the video, guys. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's just jump right into this. So one part I think is universally appreciated appreciated and liked and what I want to talk about first here is the gameplay of Halo Infinite. The multiplayer gameplay is freaking solid dude it's awesome I'm really enjoying myself playing this game. I think I'm sitting right about 40 hours worth of gameplay right now on Steam which is just ridiculous but the game is just too much fun man. I feel like Halo Infinite's multiplayer is like a revamp like Halo 3 multiplayer if it was released in 2021 with the way the gunplay works the equipment the map styles and things like that and the art style it's just it's all there man it's really good stuff. So gameplay wise I would probably get like a 9 out of 10 kind of feeling with it because some weapons do need some love or some nerfs as well. I I think the assault rifle certainly could use a little bit of a nerf if we have the max spread increase a little bit more because it's just a little too good. I like to see the Hydra get a buff as well, maybe faster lock on times and better, more damage with the projectiles on top of that. But again, just like a slight buff, nothing too crazy. Uh, the Ravager I think needs some love. I think from the flight or something, like, something happened because that weapon does not do nearly as much damage as it really should be doing. And it feels like to me that they buffed the Heat Wave as well because the Heat Wave, I'm like actually picking this up and getting kills with it now, which is like pretty Pretty freaking awesome. Aiming certainly feels better compared to the flight. You know, they did do a little bit of a buff when it comes to the aim assist for controller for a lot of the weapons and things like that. So I definitely have noticed this improvement. Things are feeling much more snappy and a lot more solid, I guess would be the best way to put it when it comes to the aiming in the game. The maps are awesome. I pretty much like all the maps in the game, except for one. One map, launch site. Uh, I can't, I can't stand that map for Team Slayer. Launch site is definitely much more of like a, an attack defend kind of map. Uh, to play it with like Team Slayer or literally any other mode just doesn't feel right. It's so large that it doesn't really play out that well for 4v4, but would be too small for big team battles. So it's a really awkwardly sized map. Uh, that's why you need to have like an attack defend kind of game mode that goes along with this map so then it helps kind of condense the gunplay and also the action within the map but the map itself is great it's just i feel like it's a little too large so i guess that's kind of the positives right now when it comes to halo infinite so we kind of have to jump into some of the negatives because there are certainly some negative aspects of this multiplayer of course the biggest talk in the community right now is the progression system within Halo Infinite. The fact there is no like overarching XP gains, all the XP is channeled through the challenge system and all your progression is basically tied to the battle pass as well. And when we launched, yeah, it was pretty rough when it comes to gaining levels. But now, ever since they made some progress when it comes to the challenge system, giving us per match XP now, it's only like a little 50, like here, here's a little change for your kind of experience. But if you focus on your challenges, you can really get through your battle pass. Uh, just last night on my stream, I played for four hours and we started at level 20 and then we finished at level 30. So the, the progression is there now, like we can make through it just fine because this season is supposed to last us until May. And after one week of playing, I'm already one third of the way through the battle pass. That's kind of crazy now there are leaks and rumors which we talked about previously on the channel that the battle pass might be extended to 120 i'll just keep you guys up to date if anything like that actually comes to fruition i'd say the progression is not that great I mean, especially when we take in consideration what we've had previously, right? That's kind of the weird thing about Halo Infinite is that they're, now they're monetizing the progression, they're monetizing the, ca the customization within the game as well. So there are going to be some growing pains when it comes to this process. And 343 even stated that they actually had to reorganize some of their priorities when it comes to Halo Infinite because of the pushback that the community has given them about the progression system in Halo Infinite. Now, I think the stuff that's in like the season one battle pass is some pretty cool stuff, some great armor customization and things like that. But this event battle pass we just had had uh that's pretty lackluster there's like what like four or five actual pieces of armor within the 30 tiers most of it's just xp grants and challenge swaps which aren't exactly rewarding to 
grind your way through. Also, where's that samurai armor that we saw in all the promotional material? That's just not there in the battle pass, which I was kind of expecting to see that because that's like the cool looking Yo Royal armor set. The stuff that we have right now for the core is kind of like store brand version of Yo Royal, is what it kind of feels like. A lot of people have been saying that the fracture event is just a cash grab from 343, which I mean, the battle pass is completely free. Yeah, there is a new armor set and stuff like that within the shop. Of course, that's completely optional for you. I think it's just one of the growing pains I was expecting to see the community go through is the fact that the customization in Halo Infinite, you're not supposed to have it all because there's gonna be so much customization thrown at you that you're really only supposed to pick and choose out of like the entire litter of customization of stuff that you really want. Obviously the battle pass is supposed to kind of collect it all, but that's kind of like the monetization scheme that we've seen in other shooters as well. Games like Apex Legends, Call of Duty, Fortnite as well. It's like, you're not supposed to own everything that's in the game, but yeah, 20 bucks for like an armor set and a coding and like a whole like get up is, it's a bit much. It's a bit much. <laughs> Luckily though, all the problems that are going through right now with Halo Infinite are things that can be fixed pretty easily. They're more just kind of changing up numbers. I mean, 343 has the data. They can see how people are progressing through the battle pass. They can see what challenges people are completing or swapping out as well. This is only just the first week and it's a completely new system that they're working with. And so I give them a little bit of slack on that, but obviously yes, like right now, it's not that rewarding, especially once you finish like your weekly challenges, which last time on stream, People said they completed their weekly challenges within like the first day. And people were like, well, what do I do now? I got nothing to do besides play the game. And um, I mean, from my point of view, I just like playing the game. Customization and things like that has always been kind of like secondary to my experience when it comes to playing Halo. But yes, yeah, like customizing your Spartan, doing all these different kind of things when it comes to personalizing your gameplay experience is definitely fun. I like doing it, but having like unlocks for giving me the reason why to play the game rather than just enjoying playing the game itself it's not really gonna deter me from playing. I definitely noticed this with the challenge system that once you complete all your weeklies, the grind is certainly there and it doesn't really make me want to utilize my double XP points. It does feel a bit of a pain to grind through it. But again, then again, like I played for four hours one night and I still didn't complete all my challenges. 343 has to balance out this challenge system, right? We'd have to go, okay, how much game time should we expect people to play every week? And a lot of people out there can only do like a couple hours a week. Not everyone can put in like streamer hours or put in like 20 hours a week when it comes to playing Halo. The one thing I would really like to see added in would be like a seasonal challenge system, much like we have with the MCC right now. We need some just kind of overarching goals to where it's not everything's just tied to every single week, everything's short term when it comes to the rewards. I'd like to see some long term rewards added into this challenge system as well. It give people during those situations where they go through all their weeklies, you still have something to progress for, make that a coding or maybe like some kind of weapon charm or some emblem or just something, you know, just to get people that carried at the end of the stick that you always need when it comes to shooters nowadays. Theater mode right now is pretty busted. Uh, like we all talked about this in a previous video, but like, yeah, the theater mode, it's kind of a hot mess right now. Like pretty much unusable at this moment, which is kind of surprising how it's again, 343 theater mode does not meet the bar of what was created way back in 2007. Basically all the issues that you experienced in Halo 5, well, they're back in Halo Infinite for the theater mode. There's a really weird bug that's happening right now with theater mode where if you go watch a match, you back out of it, you leave the game once you're done watching it, the game will actually kick you offline. And so then you have to reboot your game to be able to get back online to either watch another game or to actually play the game itself. I plan to make a dedicated video about the theater mode because it's just all over the place, man. There's so many things wrong with it. Another negative I would say would be the matchmaking right now, uh, especially for social matches. That's mainly what I've been playing on stream. And my God, guys, the, I think my nightmare came true when it came to Halo Infinite's matchmaking that it's very sweaty. I mean, it's quite the challenge to play just regular quick play it's like every lobby i'm getting into it's just full of parties with like all hds skins and stuff like that i mean i'm not sure if having an hds skin determines whether or not you're a sweaty kind of player or they're just the only cool looking coatings at the moment right now though uh it just feels like i have to try right ass off right now just to be able to break even right now in quick play which i feel like it just shouldn't be the case I and mean, i agree with skill-based matchmaking being in a game because there's certainly tiers of people that like 
I should never be matching against either like some people out there with disabilities, some people who are brand new to the game and things like that. Like I shouldn't be matching them because I've been playing for 20 years as well and I'm a rather competent player, but it feels like every game I'm getting into, it's like a ranked match almost and people are trying really freaking hard to win their caught quick play matches, which is just, I'm just kind of jumping around doing some weird things. Like I try when I jump into competitive, which we'll talk about in a second here, but the strict skill-based matchmaking that's in Halo Infinite, just needs you need to loosen up the brackets man like my experience with the master chief collection social matches are fun you know they're not too crazy not too try hardy like sometimes you come across a rough match that just happens you know but i feel like with the master chief collection like i can just jump on to play some casual slayer and things just be pretty chill i can hang out with chat and just have a good time now i'm not saying i want to be able to like dunk on people who are like doing you know poorly and go like you know 25 and 5 error game that's not what i'm talking about but it's just like i feel like i have to utilize like all my hcs techniques just to be able to break even right now and skill with the skill based matchmaking and, and social mode for btb and for quick play it's just a bit much i just like to see that loosened up a bit more because i'm afraid that the skill based matchmaking might kind of kill off the multiplayer because we've seen this with call of duty as well where i've completely stopped playing call of duty games i like them they're fun to play but not against the people i end up playing against because it's just so damn sweaty coming across guys using their cdl sweaty skins booty sliding across the map or every, every single gunfight i get into like i'm just trying to utilize some cover and maybe get a uav but even that's more difficult than it needs to be and people were worried in halo 5 that the settings were too sweaty uh well check out the matchmaking in halo infinite that's way worse than any setting that halo 5 did I'm talking about competitive ranked play as well it seems to be all right for the most part but it seems like a lot, a lot of times it's matching people off of MMR and not your CSR which apparently the MMR system is supposed to match you with a more accurate player than what the CSR says though from my experience when I played like my first like seven placement matches I lost five of them uh, we actually won one game and the only other game we won is because the other team quit out because they had a bad start other than that, it feels like I've been carrying these lobbies to a loss every single game. It's been pretty rough. Of course, it's a new game. I have to learn these systems. I have to learn how to shoot the battle rifle differently because I'm like the most consistent five shot battle rifle in Halo right now. I would also say that in the gameplay side of things, my only downside when it comes to the gameplay would be the fact that like coming across vehicles is like almost impossible. Like at least notable vehicles like a Banshee, a Wasp, a tank or something like that in BTB. They're just so rare to find with the way the pickup system works and where they drop those vehicles vehicles as well it's just like i just don't really plan to play with vehicles unless it's like a warhog or something like that in btb everything else is like if i'm there at the right time at the right situation or something like that then i might be able to jump into something cool but uh, for the most part uh tanks are super rare to see when i see a tank i'm like oh my god that's amazing so all the stuff around the core gameplay experience of Halo Infinite needs a lot of work. I'd probably give it like a 4 out of 10 with missing features, no stats, uh, the theater mode's trash, and the progression system certainly needs some love as well. And you know, no overarching ranking system as well when it tells you like how much you've played and things like that. You know, people really like that stuff. That's the reason why like 10th Prestige in Call of Duty was kind of a cool thing because it flexed how much you really enjoyed the game, you know? And that XP rank system is not gonna be coming around anytime soon when it comes to Halo, probably not within the first year. But the core gameplay itself, I give it like a solid nine out of 10, dude. There's like some minor tweaks that I think that could utilize to really make it a 10 out of 10. But right now the core, they're like, three for three is lucky that the core gameplay of Halo Infinite is so good because everything else around it is pretty minimal and not that great but the great thing about it is that all the stuff that's not great can be easily changed with just some data and some time guys we've only had one week to play halo if it's multiplayer we're gonna get the updates things are gonna change over time it's a live service i mean three for three already changed the xp earn rates within like the third day of the game being out so they're listening to us but just make sure you're respectful and also critiquing properly when it comes to Halo Infinite. If you guys are new to the channel, missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.